range that give you just dramatically different plant communities out here. The differences in elevation really are a result of flowing water across this very shallow, broad river of grass. So our visit to the Everglades today, we're going to take a look at uh, a number of different habitats that, that the Everglades is really known for. These habitats uh, depend on uh, a set quantity and quality of fresh water flowing across the surface. And that has changed pretty dramatically over the last 70 to 100 years because of the attempts to drain the Everglades and also the need for flood protection and water supply as populations in South Florida grew. And, um, what's really happened to the Everglades is that it's received uh, much less freshwater flow than it used to receive historically. And that connection from Lake Okeechobee to uh, the Everglades River of Grass and Everglades National Park to the south has really been reduced to the point where in some years the ecosystem is just too dry. Uh, there are also areas that are really too wet because they're adjacent to a dam area that water piles up against. And so the habitats across the Everglades have been responding to that. Um, some areas that are too dry for too long, they burn. Uh, the soils have oxidized um, to the point where we have a flattening of the landscape and we no longer have sawgrass ridges and sloughs, uh, the deep water habitats in the Everglades that provide really the, the ability for food to concentrate across the landscape in the Everglades. And that's what really gave rise to the population of wading birds that the Everglades was once known for. Now, if those phosphorus concentrations uh, above that threshold are sustained for too long, we get a conversion to cattail, which is uh, really a, a, a tombstone for the Everglades. It's a permanent transition of the natural freshwater marsh habitat to a polluted state. And we know that those areas that have been converted to cattail um, will be sustained in that form for quite some time. What restoration of the Everglades will do uh, not only will it help to restore the quality of water needed to protect the Everglades, but it will restore that natural sheet flow of water to the south so that we can uh, reconnect these compartments. We can remove barriers to flow, like bridging Tamiami Trail, allowing that water to flow from top to bottom. It also involves bringing more fresh water in at the top. Uh, in order to do that, we need to build storage south of Lake Okeechobee.